Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Sure. Welcome to another video in my ongoing series focusing on free independent games. This is Telepaint by Mark Foster. I've been following Mark for a couple of months now, keeping up with the progress he's making on his new game Chroma, which is doing some pretty amazing things with light and shadows, and I was pleasantly surprised to see him release Telepaint for free a couple of weeks ago. I've been playing Telepaint off and on for about a week now, and as I was leading into this video, I was struggling with how to summarize the game, how do I describe it. It's not exactly a platformer, though it may look like it at first, and it's not purely a puzzle game, it's something different. It's kind of like Lemmings meets Portal, or Baby's Day Out with Wormholes. It's a really interesting concept, and I'm going to bring you my summarized impressions of the game here in the next few minutes. So let's start things off by talking about control, or rather lack thereof. Even though it may look like a platformer, you don't actually control your little man, or paint bucket, or whatever he is. He just walks. He marches forward, oblivious to anything around him that might cause him extreme bodily harm. And it's your job to actually get him from point A to point B. So exactly how do you do that? Well, you use portals, for lack of a better word. I mean, I guess you could call them wormholes, singularities, whatever the heck you want to use. But basically, you connect two points in space. Using the number keys on your keyboard, you connect different numbers together, warping your little walking man from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 6, 5 to 1, whatever you need to actually solve the level at hand. Now this sounds really simple, and it is at first, but this game gets interestingly complex the further you go. So if the concept's not quite resonating with you yet, just keep your eyes on the screen. You're going to see my best and worst moments from about a 30 minute play session, and you will slowly but surely start to understand exactly how this great free indie game actually works. Telepaint definitely has an interesting gameplay dynamic on the PC, but according to Mark's website, IamClaw.com, it was even more interesting in its original deployment. Telepaint was created in a weekend for the Manchester Maker Fair, and was actually set up and played on six large colored buttons. Not only does that sound like an interesting and innovative idea, I'm sure it was probably pure madness watching people try to cooperate with each other in order to hit the right combinations and get the little walking man to his eventual goal. Overall, I found Telepaint to be interesting, innovative, and a whole hell of a lot of fun. I'm having trouble conquering the game, in part because the number pad on my keyboard no longer works after I had to deconstruct my laptop a few months ago. Yeah, I'm one of those guys lugging around a 15 pound laptop that's large enough to have a number pad on it, and yet I'm also simultaneously the white trash ghetto redneck who also managed to break it. However, I have managed to play this game on a keyboard with a working number pad, and I must say that it is an interestingly intuitive way to control the game. Using the sequential numbers 1 through 6 on your QWERTY keyboard, really kind of feels awkward, but once you get on the number pad and your fingers sort of start to do the walking, as they say, you really start to just sort of function on your own, and it almost becomes like playing a guitar. You know, you have to make sure that you're using the right finger to press down on the right button so that your next move will actually be physically possible, otherwise you're going to end up bringing two hands into it and... God, I can't even manage to coordinate one of my hands most of the time, so two is generally out of the question. Telepaint reminds me of why I started this channel, why I've been doing this for a year in relative obscurity, because even if two or three people find out about this game, it's the sort of game that's worth spreading the word about. You know, a few weeks ago when I said that free independent gaming is going to become a much bigger part of the channel, this is the sort of game I was hoping to find and hoping to be able to bring to you. I hope that you take the time to download and play Telepaint. Maybe pay attention to Mark, check out Chroma, check out his website, IamClaw.com. The thing about this series is that it's not only a way to find out about interesting, free, independent games. It's also a great way to get a look into the future, if you will. A guy like Mark, who's out there making an interesting game like Telepaint, is sowing the seeds to be the next Derek Yu, or Jonathan Blow, or Edmund McMillan, or insert random cool indie developer here. 
And frankly, it's just a pleasure to get to look in on Mark at this point of his career. You know, he's got Hypersnake on the iOS, one commercial game already under his belt, and I really think that he's an interesting developer to watch. I mean, I put him right up there with guys like Matt Thorson or Luke Schneider from Radiant Games, guys who I just want to consume content from. All right, all right, let me kind of calm down here. I'm giving you the hard sell on this game, and it's absolutely free, so why do I even have to sell it to you, right? I'm really excited about the new direction here, moving forward, making free independent games more of a part of the channel. Regular content still going to continue as it always has, but this is going to become something that you're going to see coming out from me much more frequently. All relevant links are in the description below. Mark Foster, Telepaint. I have been Big Dave, bringing you the absolute best in free independent games. Until next time, take it easy.